Welcome, Cross Point Church. Good morning. Good morning. We're back to full numbers this morning, finally. So that's a good thing. Um, I see you stand with me this morning and let's get ready to worship. I hope, you, I hope that you've had an awesome week. But if you've been through a battle this week, you're in the right place this morning. Pray with me. Thank you, Father God, for today. Thank you, Jesus, that you have everything that we need this morning. No matter what that need is, no matter how big or how small, Father God, you see it and you know it. And you said where two or more are gathered, you would be in the midst. So we welcome you into this place. And we thank you that you've joined us this morning. We love you, Jesus. We're so thankful for who you are and what you've done for us already today, Father God. We just give you all the honor and praise. We ask that you have freedom in this place and that we have freedom to worship you in a mighty way. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. Lead us and guide us so that your will would be done. In Jesus' name. You made all things work together for me. 
Amen. His love never fails. No matter if we are struggling and the struggle is real, right? His love never fails. What a great reminder this morning. I just want to take a moment to thank you if you have uh, brought books, uh, book bags, supplies, school supplies, pencils, paper. If you brought that in this morning, we thank you for the back to school bash we've been doing over at Just Teasing with free haircuts from 9 to 6 on the 22nd. Uh, for K-12 students going back into school. And uh, if you forgot that, we still got maybe another week. We could take some if you want to bring that next week. If you forgot it, just bring it. We'll take it. And because uh, we want to meet the needs of those who have needs. You know, Deuteronomy 15.10 says, Give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. That's pretty plain, isn't it? We're to give of what we have to those less fortunate than us. And then God, because he can, he will bless us. So thank you for that. And as we prepare for our offering this morning, just know that it's not about the amount, it's about your heart. God will bless you for being faithful to him. When we give back to him, it's a time we can worship him and we can say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to wake up this morning. Thank you for allowing me to be able to have a job, to be able to afford things, to be able to give back so that others might come to know you and experience the love and joy that I get to have in my heart and life. So as we prepare for our offering at this time, would you pray with me? Father, as we prepare to take this offering, God, I pray that you would just see it as just a complete, Lord, offer of our heart as well as our finances. God, we worship you. We love you. And we just want to give back. Lord, we want to be a small part of what you're doing to further the kingdom through us and through this church. So, God, I pray that you just multiply it and grow it. Lord, bless the gift and the giver. God, and just do some amazing things through your people your church. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said,
pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise you for who you are, and we praise you for all that you've done for us. God, we are not worthy of that. But God, we sing our praise to you because you are worthy and because you came and died and rose again from the grave. God, we praise your name. God, for every person who's struggling this morning, I pray for your hand of mercy on them. I pray for your hand of healing. I pray for your hand of direction that, God, you would give wisdom and sight to the blind and that, God, that we would see again and know the direction to go and follow and chase after you in such a real way. God, we praise your name. Bless this time. Use it for your glory. Bless Pastor Chris and speak through him in such a powerful way. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. We're going to continue today in our message series called The Struggle is Real. Anybody have any struggles this week? Raise your hand. All you struggle-free people, raise your hand so we can see you and then look at you. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, man, it is so real. But, you know, one thing that comes up on us that we always seem to enjoy does anybody enjoy pie? Does anybody enjoy cake? Oh, yes. Yeah. So what about you always hope you get to go to the party so you can have a piece of birthday cake, right? Birthday cake. And now it's gotten so crazy. It used to just be you get a birthday cake. Now it's like, well, do you want yellow or white or chocolate? Do you want marble? Do you want whipped icing? Do you want buttercream? Do you want, I don't even know what all, do you want? Lard is what it's basically made out of. So that's always good. That's always good. You get, lard is good. So anyway, but birthdays are great fun. Birthday parties are great fun. I saw last night uh, a picture I saw a picture of this guy at a birthday party last night. I think he was somebody like, well, I don't really know because it was on some news article that, but I don't keep up with celebrities, so it really doesn't matter. But whoever it was and told his name and his wife's name and his twin sons. And, but he had a birthday cake and they had it lit, the candles lit. He was getting ready to blow out the candles and his sons pushed his face in the cake and it on fire. Live on the edge, I don't know, I guess. But anyway, it was a, seemed like a fun party to me. But it's a lot of fun. You know, surprise parties can be fun too. Especially when you are the one getting surprised. Especially when you have to go through something to get there. You know, I had one of those a couple years ago when I turned 50. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, and I had to go on this wild goose chase, something about a flat tire or something, if I remember. And I was just like, well, I told you not to go anyway. I don't know. What? So I go in my clothes to change a tire or work on a car and wind up in a place filled with people that said, surprise. And I was like, you don't really know. Surprise. Didn't really dress up for you. So... But those are always good. We love birthdays and birthday parties and children, especially that's a fun thing. And you know your birthday. You know when your birthday is. And it's funny because you all know that my mother has Alzheimer's and she just recently had a birthday. And I asked her, uh, I told her happy birthday. And I said, happy birthday, mom. She said, happy birthday to you. And I said, no, it's your birthday. And so, but you know, with all that she has going on, I said, well, when is your birthday? She popped it off just like that. And she knew it. So we know our date of birth and that's an exciting time for us. We even know maybe the time that we were born. And so with that in mind, the question I would have this morning is, would you ever think that we would hate the day we were born? Would you ever think that you would hate the day that you were born? Most of us would go, no. Man, we celebrate that. We enjoy that. That's a great time. But we're going to look at somebody this morning who said those very words. And you can probably guess, yes, it's Job. It's Job who had had people come to his house one after the other to tell him that he had lost livestock and farm hands were killed. They were just raided and murdered. 
And then yet again, more bad news. Fire burned up sheep and shepherds. And then yet again, more bad news. Your children were having a feast and this giant wind comes and just wipes out the building and your children. And then on top of that, he is stricken with boils from head to toe. And it is at this moment that we find Job in Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3, if you want to turn there. And you know, he hadn't really said a whole lot except for, you know, the Lord blessed me with all this basically and he can take it away. I came naked from my mother's womb and, you know, I don't take anything with me. But then he was silent with all this other was going on with the boils and he just kind of stopped there for a moment. And then chapter 3 verse 1 says this. At last Job spoke, and he cursed the day of his birth. He said, let the day of my birth be erased, and the night I was conceived. Let that day be turned to darkness. Let it be lost even to God on high, and let no light shine upon it. Whew. You think he's struggling? Let the darkness and utter gloom claim that day for its own. Let a black cloud overshadow it and let the darkness terrify it. Let that night be blotted off the calendar, never again to be counted among the days of the year, never again to appear among the months. Let that night be childless. Let it have no joy. Let those who are experts at cursing, whose cursing could rouse Leviathan, curse that day. Let its morning stars remain dark. Let it hope for light, but in vain. May it never see the morning light. Whew. It's getting rough, isn't it? He says, curse that day for failing to shut my mother's womb, for letting me be born to see all this trouble. Why wasn't I born dead? Why didn't I die as I came from the womb? Why was I laid on my mother's lap? Why did she nurse me at her breasts? Had I died at birth, I would now be at peace. I would be asleep and at rest. Whew. Does that sound like a struggle? Maybe a struggle unlike we have ever felt. Maybe you have felt that way. Listen, Job had those same feelings. He had lost it all, all of a sudden. I know that many of us have felt that we have lost it all or we have lost something significant or we have lost something so dear to us all of a sudden, maybe it was not very suddenly, very, maybe it wasn't immediately, but in a short time frame, and that was a loss, a tremendous loss. He had lost it all, all of a sudden. And maybe you have been there. Maybe you understand where he's coming from. But one thing's for sure, he was in complete misery. He was basically hopeless at this point. To be in pain, suffering. And maybe you have felt miserable at some point in your life. You just go, man, I don't even know how to process this. I don't even know what to do with this. I don't even know where it lands. That's a struggle. That's a struggle. But one of the things we find is that he had to get himself around some people who were going to be a help. 
He had to get himself around some people that were going to be a help. You see, when we go through these things, when we go through these struggles, and does the Bible say we're going to go through struggles and trials on this earth? Yes. But we know that God's never going to leave us nor forsake us, right? So we have that hope, but see here, he found himself at a place that he was completely miserable. He had lost it all. I mean, just think about it. But we see that if we back up to verse 11, I'll just read this to you. What an amazing thing. When three of Job's friends heard of the tragedy he had suffered, they got together and traveled from their homes to comfort and console him. When they saw Job from a distance, they scarcely recognized him. Now get this, wailing loudly, they tore their robes and threw dust into the air over their heads to show their grief. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and nights. No one said a word to Job, for they saw that his suffering was too great for words. Now, maybe you have those friends in your life. He had to have someone around him. Get this. They drove. They walked. They didn't drive. I don't guess. I don't know. But they went to where he was. They showed their grief for what he was experiencing. And then they sat there. And if you listen, if you've never had a friend come and just sit and say nothing but be there with you, I hope you never have a circumstance that that has to happen. But if you do and you have that friend who comes and who just sits and says nothing, it's an amazing feeling. It's an amazing friendship that they will just sit and say nothing. What they're saying is, I'm with you. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm in this. I'm feeling it. And I'm struggling because you're struggling. But he had those faith-filled friends. If I said, so a tragedy strikes you, somebody comes to you and says this, then someone else comes and says this, and someone else comes and says this, and it's more than you can bear. Who would be your three? Would you have three? Would there in this day and time, would you have one? Would you have one who would come and who would just sit for hours? And then after six, eight, 10, 12 hours say, well, I've got to go to work. I'm going to go take a shower. And then they come back. And then they come back. They did this for seven days and nights. No one said a word to Job. Let me ask you, can you imagine being one of those friends? Can you imagine sitting with Job, not saying a word for seven days and nights? Let me ask you this. Could you sit for seven minutes not saying a word to somebody you're sitting beside of or checking your phone or sending them a text? <laughs> well, I can't talk to them. Let me just send them a little something right quick. Just to let them know. But you know, in times of tragedy, in times of terrible events, in times of struggle, in our minds, we feel like we have to say something. We have to craft a statement to share with somebody. We have to be able to go, I'm so sorry, and I, I know, and I feel, and I have. And I, when sometimes we just need to say, I love you. I'm here for you. Or just, I'm sorry. And look that friend in the eye. But they, he had faith-filled friends who were there. And they had an absolute, 
unshakable faith. And I'm sure that he could feel that. I'm sure he could feel that they were right there with him. We're going through this with you. Don't feel like you're alone. I'm with you. We are with you. This is a, a real, deep, tough struggle. So you got to have those faith-filled friends. And you have to have an absolute, unshakable faith. We have to have that. We have to say, God, I know you are going to take care of this. I know you're going to take care of me. But right now it seems so horrible. It seems so awful. It seems so miserable. And it probably does feel that way because it is that way. But God is bigger than all that. God is bigger. And I love when all these things come to pass in the Bible that are just tough places to be when you're living them out and you're living out that scripture that we read. I love when it says, but God, but God. But he had that absolute unshakable faith. You know, I wonder if he didn't ask himself at some point in time, if he didn't say, is this it? I mean, I have lived the best life I know to live. I have been a man of integrity and I have feared God and I have followed God and I have been who God wanted me to be. I've been a righteous man. I've tried to raise my family right. I've tried to do all these things. And then here Satan is throwing all these things at him. You wonder if he didn't go, man, is this it? Is this, oh, I've done all this and then this? Is this as good as it gets? Is this all that I get? Is this, what is this God? And it comes around to that question we ask, why? Right? The, one of the things we have to remember is to not grow weary. Do not grow weary. Do not grow weary. See, in all these things, he said, oh, man, if I was never born, I wouldn't be going through all this. If I hadn't been born, I wouldn't have all these issues. I wouldn't have all these losses. I wouldn't have all these things come up. Oh. And then... He has um, a friend reply. Right when he is just beginning to grow so weary and so tired and he's continued to curse the day that he's lived, the day that he was born, the days he's been alive. Lord, why, why, why? Maybe you've been there. Here's the two by four moment. Some of you know what that means. Sometimes the old saying is, man, I feel like somebody hit me with a two before. I guess it's a step down from I feel like I've been hit by a truck. So, um, which it never is, by the way. It never is. It doesn't feel that way, so don't use it. Just use the two before. Okay, a little side note. It'll be a little bit, be a little bit open to my feelings. Um, God is good. That's the only reason I can joke about that. Amen. God is good. But this is the moment right here in preparing for this message. This is the moment I was reading through and I was reading through and studying. And I was just going, man, this is so bad. I, I get that. I get what that feels like. I understand where he's coming from. I understand what he's feeling. And we feel that sometimes. Our emotions run high and we feel so broken and so challenged and so worried. I say, man, why? Is this it? I don't know. I'm weary, God. Oh, but then... He sends somebody. 
chapter 4. Then Eliphaz, the Temanite, replied to Job. <laughs> Will you be patient and let me say a word? For who could keep from speaking out? Here we go. Y'all ready? He tells him, in the past you have encouraged many people. You have strengthened those who were weak. Your words have supported those who were falling. You encourage those with shaky knees. But now when trouble strikes, you lose heart. You are terrified when it touches you. Doesn't your reverence for God give you confidence? Doesn't your life of integrity give you hope? How many times have we encouraged other people? How many times have we talked to other people about their circumstances? Hmm. He said, how many times have you done that? So now what? Now what? The struggle is still real. But be encouraged. He's saying, be encouraged. You encouraged other people during this time. In their time of trouble, be encouraged. I don't know about you, but that was just a woo, light me up kind of moment. Renew your strength. Renew your strength. Since you have encouraged many people in verse 3, you have strengthened those who are weak. Basically, if you have strengthened other people, you have shared with other people what God is capable of doing, what God can do, then strengthen yourself. Be strengthened in his word. Be strengthened in who he is. Be confident. Be confident. He says, doesn't your reverence for God give you confidence? Hmm. Don't we know that God created us? He gave us life. He formed us in our mother's womb before anything else. He knew us in the womb. He knew us in the womb before anything else. So where's that confidence in our reverence for him? And he says exhibit, or exhibit hope is the last thing because we need to have that hope. Exhibit hope in your life. Because doesn't your life of integrity give you hope? Listen, we are either going to be hopeful or hopeless. When people see us, they either see hopeful or hopeless. What do they see in your life? Do you exhibit hope in times of trouble, in times of struggle? Or hopelessness? You know, I wonder if Job thought, when Eliphaz came up to him, if he was going to say, man, I know it's bad. It's really bad. But you know, sometimes we need that one person that comes and speaks truth into our lives and says, hey, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? All these people you've encouraged, all these people you have kept from falling, all these people you have talked to that you have prayed with, that you have prayed for, all these people that look at your life and they aspire to be like you because of who you are. 
I want to speak that truth to you this morning. That truth straight from his word. Are you encouraged? Are you renewing your strength? Are you confident? Do you exhibit hope? Isaiah 43 Verses 1 through 3, I want to share that with you. Isaiah 43. The Bible says this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel. The one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. If you are his this morning, then you know that. But then he says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Whew. That's some hope right there. That's some hope right there. And that's where we put our hope and trust. And that saving knowledge of Christ, the Son of God. You see, God's experienced the things we experience here already. He knows our emotions. He knows our pains. He knows our struggles. And this morning, as we look at how badly Job felt that he would curse the very day he was born, we know that must have been bad. Because based on what we think about our birthdays, we think, hey, I ought to get the week off because it's my birthday this week. It's on a work day, right? We should just celebrate, get a breakfast snack, birthday breakfast, and the lunch, then the dinner. Yay. Do I have to do chores today? It's my birthday. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Will we ever get to that place? If we do, then how will we react? How will we react? I tell you, God wants us to be confident in that hope that he has given us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's it. That's the hope that we have. That's what we have to look forward to. That's what gets us through the struggles what gets us through the struggles. And I just want to share with you on a personal note this morning. I don't know God. I know God's timing is perfect. <laughs> you know, sometimes you see me sharing up here as your preacher. And sometimes you see me come and visit and it's a pastoral visit or I go see folks in the hospital or wherever that may be. You know that I do other things. You know that I do weddings and I do funerals and it's just part of it and it's just part of it and it's just part of it, right? Wrong. Sometimes you experience seasons and sometimes in those seasons, there, is season, there are seasons of brokenness where you just feel so much empathy and compassion for families in their loss. In this past week, there have been two significant events that have impacted me and the losses that families have experienced. And you know, 
this is a tremendous struggle when we go through these dark, dark days. And sometimes as a pastor and as a person, you just begin to get heavy and you go, man, huh, this is just heavy. And you have to sometimes remind yourself that God is walking right there beside you. He's walking right beside that family. But this morning, one thing I want you to take away from this message today is this. When you are struggling, when others around you are struggling, whatever you're struggling with, reach out to someone else and try to help someone else up and that'll help you. That's the number one thing. Help someone else who is struggling, who is hurting, and that will help you. The other thing is this. <laughs> In the past, you have encouraged many people. You have strengthened those who were weak. Your words have supported those who were falling. You encouraged those with shaky knees. But now when trouble strikes, you lose heart. You are terrified when it touches you. Doesn't your reverence for God give you confidence? Doesn't your life of integrity give you hope? I want to ask you this morning, do you have that hope? Do you have that hope in Jesus Christ that no matter what, you're good? Because I don't want you to leave this place today hoping that you get to come back another Sunday to get it right. Hoping that you get to come back another month from now when you're off again to get it right. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, today is the day of salvation. If you are watching online right now and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, in just a moment we're going to pray and I invite you to do that and send us a message letting us know that you have. But today is the day. Will you be confident? Will you exhibit hope? What will you do? We know those trials are coming. What will you do? What will you do? Would you pray with me? Father, this morning I know that we have broken your word open, Lord, and seen a, a heavy place. But God, thank you for Eliphaz and the hope of that one that would tell us, hey, you've encouraged other people, encourage yourself. Lord Jesus, I pray this morning, if someone doesn't know you as the Son of God, the risen Savior, the one who died on the cross and rose again, Father, that today would be their day. Lord, be it in this building or be it online, may they pray a prayer after me like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Without you, I am lost and on my way to hell. But I believe that you died on that cross. You were buried, and three days later, you rose again. You did that for my sins. Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my life and save me. Lord, I pray that you would just Allow those who accepted you online to send us a message. Lord, those who are here this morning, I need to get them some information. I pray you'd help them to be bold and walk this aisle and meet me. Lord, I pray that they would understand that if we're ashamed of you on earth, you'll be ashamed of us before your Father in heaven. Lord, I pray that you'd move as only you can. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Would you stand, please? And as we sing, as we prepare to sing, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to make your way right now. I want to meet you right over here. Just make your way. Don't wait. I want to meet you. Come on down. If you need to leave something here at this altar this morning, come right down here. Leave it. Leave it. Don't wait. Make your way. What are you struggling with? What do you need to leave? Right down here. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken heart, let a rescue begin. Come Leave it down 
here. Don't struggle any longer. Don't struggle any longer. Make your way. Don't wait. Come on. Don't wait.
it's the only way we can come, isn't it? As we are. We can't change it all. We can't fix it all. But we know the one who can. Amen. We just have to walk through this journey and trust him with everything. I hope that you have worshipped him this morning. I hope that God has spoken to you. I hope that you will leave this place today having hope that others can see, exhibiting hope and showing confidence in our Lord and Savior. Throughout your week, whatever comes your way, let those who are struggling know how big the God is that we serve. Would you do that this week? Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this amazing time of worship. God, we thank you for all those that brought things, Lord, to give to the that give to the less fortunate this morning, Lord, that they would have needs that we could meet as a church, Lord, through the back-to-school bash. I thank you for the gift of worship through giving, the worship through song, the worship through word, the worship through prayer. God, thank you. You're so good to us. Lord, we just want to tell you we love you, we thank you, we praise you. Lord, though the struggle is real, Lord, let us see you in everything comes our way in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Have a great week, everybody. See you.